Hi, my name is Chidi. Good morning. Hope you're having a great day. We're going to be discussing rules of attraction. Now, the whole point of this is we want to discuss things that we can do that can help us singles and married in our relationships. So for the singles, we want to discuss what are the things that men find attractive in a woman? What are the things women find attractive in a man? What are the things that can help foster relationships? What are the things that can help initiate conversations? What are the things that can help start up friendships? What are the things that can begin to make one party or the other party to begin to build interest in one another? Because all these things I said don't happen in a vacuum. They don't just happen. There is a legitimate purpose. Sometimes these things happen without us knowing. They happen automatically. They happen by default. But sometimes they are done strategically. And if you are a person of purpose, you will know that in these times, these are times where you live a strategic life. These are times where you live your life deliberately. These are times when you think about, you put thought into what you want to do and then you do them to get a desired result. That is how people who are strategic lead their lives. So we're going to be discussing what are the things that we can do to, be, to, to kickstart this process of building relationships that would last a lifetime, building relationships that would um, mature into permanent relationships. We're going to talk about beauty. So we'll talk about outer beauty. We're going to talk about inner beauty. And these are the things that draw or attract people to us or attract us to people. So we're going to talk about these things. And we want to do everything we do in the light of the world. We want to do everything we talk about. We want to bring it in the light of the world. We don't want to say things that are just from our brains, from our opinions, worldly views, and things like that. No, we are people of the world. We are people who have been called by God. So everything we do, we want to do it in the light of the world. Amen. Now we're going to be talking about outer beauty. It's important before we start to know, and I'm sure you know, outer beauty is not everything. When God sent Samuel to David's house, to the house of Jesse, and Samuel saw David's first brother, and he said, surely this is the Lord's appointed. Surely this is the Lord. He must have been a tall, handsome young man. And he saw him. And you know, because Saul, who was the king before David, was a very tall, fine young man. The Bible says he stood head above the rest. So he was quite a, he was quite a looker. And probably um, Samuel thought, hmm, maybe God likes this kind of people. So when he saw David's first brother, he said, hmm, I think this is the guy. And God told him, no. He said, man looks at the outward appearance. But that's not how God looks. No, God looks at the heart. So, man looks at the outward appearance. This is what people say. And because we live in a physical environment, because we live in a physical realm, we have to talk about what man sees. Because that's what will get your foot in the door. But the most important thing is that God looks at the heart. What God sees is not your outward appearance. We need to make this clear because we're going to be talking about outward beauty and I don't want anyone to take it that we're putting emphasis or we're emphasizing on the way you look, that that is what is important. It is important, but it isn't the most important. 
And more importantly, it isn't the way God judges you. It isn't what God sees. God doesn't look at us or love us or take care of us or, or reward us or, or bless us according to how we look. If, if it was how we look then, it would, it'd, be, it'd be terrible, wouldn't it? But God sees our hearts. This is what God, this is what pleases God. You know when God called David a man after my heart? It's because of David's attitude, because of David's behavior, conduct, because of David's heart, because of what David did, David's actions. It had nothing to do with how he looked. So God is more impressed with our inner beauty. And we're going to talk about inner beauty. But because we live in the physical realm, we will talk about outer beauty. Because outer beauty is the way man sees. And we deal with man every day. And the person you want to marry is a man or a woman, not a spirit. So we're going to talk about outer beauty. We're going to talk about outer beauty. Now, we know many women in the Bible were beautiful. We know Sarah was beautiful because Abraham was so worried about how beautiful she was that he had to tell her to lie. We know Rebecca was also a very beautiful woman because I think she was very, very beautiful because Isaac had never seen her before. Someone went and brought her. Eliza, who was um, Abraham's servant, went and brought her to Isaac and Isaac saw her and took her in immediately. He didn't say, hmm, who's that? He took her in immediately. So I think she was very beautiful. And the same thing happened to Rebecca because Isaac also asked her to lie and because she was very beautiful. So we know these women were beautiful. We know Rachel was beautiful. The Bible says that Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel was beautiful and favorable. So beauty can bring you favor. So Rachel was a beautiful woman. And Jacob said, I will walk seven years for her. And the Bible says the seven years were like a few days. It was like nothing. So we can motivate. Just a beautiful woman is enough to motivate a man to walk out. That's a very nice quote, isn't it? So, um, outward beauty is, is, is very important. Now, talking about the Proverbs 31 woman, the Bible described how she looked, how she dressed herself. Her, her, her dressing was purple and silk. Why did they say she wore rags? She used to work hard. She used to take care of her children. She used to buy lands. She used to do all that. And she used to wear rags. Or she didn't really care how she looked. Or it didn't matter how she looked. It mattered how she looked. So we know that physical appearance is very important. And even if we take a census today, of all our brothers in church, and you ask them, what is important to you? What would attract you to a woman? What would make you to become interested in someone? What would the person say first? How the person looks? Because that is the first thing we see. As I said, that's what will get your foot in the door. When the person comes close to you, then, other things will begin to matter and will begin to matter even more. That is why we're going to spend more time talking about inner beauty. But we would cheat you if we tell you inner beauty is all that matters. Because no matter how well behaved you are, how well cultured you are, how um, spirit filled you are, how if, if you are really, really, really careless about how you look. You probably would get, I'm not saying you won't get married, you would. But, you mightn't even get God's best. There might be, you, you, you mightn't hit your potential. And that is the truth. You mightn't get noticed by the kind of person you want to get noticed by. 
by the kind of person who would actually appreciate your work. You might have noticed by that person because of how you look. So it is very, very important. And on the flip side, you can be, with, and we see it all the time, people who are not very cultured, not very polite, not very respectful, not very spirit-filled, but because they're beautiful, because they dress well, because they make up well, because they're always on point. Somehow, they're the ones who all the brothers are interested in. Little wonder. So, we're going to talk about um, outer beauty. Um, and, and we say it's very important because it's what gives a first impression. So people say first impressions matter. First impressions are the best impressions. It's the first impression, how this person looks, how the person looks. If someone introduces you to a friend, so oh, there's a friend of mine I'd like you to meet. What the person say, do you have a picture? What beside anybody that that picture is a shabby picture? Won't really make it. Person just go like, hmm. Not interested. But if that picture is a really sharp picture, you know, really correct picture, very cool picture, and you're looking really, really good, the person is like, give me her number now. Okay. It's a no brainer. So the way you appear is very, very important. It's a first impression. It, the way you look. Many people remember how you looked the first time they saw you. Many people, many people, when, even after they've known you for many years, they still remember how you appeared when they first saw you. Maybe they won't remember how, how, what you were wearing, or how your hair looked, but they remember how your appearance impacted on them. They remember how you made them feel. They remember what they thought when they saw you. So, it's good to look your best. Put your best foot forward. Pay, as well for the ladies. For the men, it's also important. It's also important. The sharper you look, the more people will be interested in you. The more people want to associate with you. That's the truth. Um, and even as an aside, the sharper you look, the more beautiful you look, the more likely, as I said, to, you are to be favoured. The more likely, likely you are to get a job. The more, even when, you know, Especially depending on the kind of job it is, you might be with someone who is even more qualified than you. But for some reason, that person refused to dress up on that day, refused to look their best, didn't make their hair nicely and all that. Just because of how comely you look, you could get that job above someone who even has better qualifications just because of how you look. So we can't overemphasize how good, how important it is to look good. The other thing is when you look good, you're more confident. You know how you feel when you wear, especially for the ladies, you know how you feel when you're wearing something new, or something you know fits you, something you know enhances you. You know how you feel. You walk in a different way, you carry yourself in a different way. Um, you, you, you're more confident when you walk into a room because you know you look good. Yeah. So it, it gives you self confidence. These are the things that make you attractive your body language. These are the things that make you attractive to someone. When you're confident, when you walk, you carry yourself well, you're well put together. And all this comes with the whole package of looking good. So spend some time, put some thought into, into how you appear. To just come out anyhow, to just appear anyhow. Even on social media, you know, I'm not, a, you know, a, I don't advocate to spend so much time on social media and um, put 201 pictures on it every day, take a picture every day, put on it, blah, blah, blah. I'm not very keen on those things. And the truth is, you're, you're, if God has destined for you to meet someone, you meet that person anywhere. However, social media, as far as I'm concerned, is an avenue for good. It also has its bad parts, but it's also an avenue for good. Many people have met their spouses on social media. And that's the truth. So many relationships have started on social media. So there isn't anything wrong with it. So if you want to put a profile picture up, you want to put a picture up on social media, make sure it's one where you look good. Make sure it's one that 
gives a good overall impression of you. You don't want to put one where you're looking tacky. You don't want to put one where you're looking shabby. You don't want to put one where you are not looking decent. Because as, as a Christian woman, I believe, or as a Christian lady, I believe you want to appear decent. Don't forget modesty is the watchword here when it comes to how you look as a Christian. Modesty is a watchword. So you want to put one where you're looking modest. Don't forget, we represent the kingdom of God. We represent the kingdom of heaven. You want to be proud to say, wherever you enter, we represent God. I'm born again Christian. You will come out and say, oh, I'm born again. You will look at them and go like, really? You don't want to be like that. Once, if someone says, oh, I'm, um, I'd like to show you a picture of, of my friend, or I want, I want you to get together with my friend. So let me see your picture. And if you see the person like, is this person born again? It should be, you first shouldn't need to ask that question. But you should be able to say, yeah, she looks like a child of God. And who looks like a child of God? A modest lady, isn't it? So, very important to be modest, decent, carry yourself well. You know what suits you. You know what suits you. It takes, and the truth is, for some people it comes naturally, for some others, it doesn't come naturally. But it takes some time and some thought and some detail and some good advice to know this is what suits me. This is what makes me appear better. These are the colors that suit me. These are the colors that don't suit me. Um, and to know how to get, get these things together. I'm not saying spend a lot of money on your appearance. I'm not saying become obsessed with how you look. I'm not saying become obsessed with yourself. That isn't what God wants for you. But you need to represent God well. You need to represent God well. And if you want to attract the right person, then you need to look in a certain way. So, outward, outward appearance isn't the most important thing, but it's something we need to think about as a single man, as a single lady. And even as a married woman, even as a married man, we don't throw it all away and say, well, I'm married and no one is looking at me. Let's not have that attitude. Research has shown, and this I found out recently, research has shown that couples who continue to take care of themselves, continue to remain physically attractive, listen to this, have more rapport, have a better relationship, last longer than those who do not. Now, physical attraction, isn't everything and we all know that it's not everything and it's it is very very far from being the bedrock of marriage but it is important most men want a physically attractive wife most if not all want a physically attractive wife want the wife they would be proud of want someone who say oh this is my wife they won't be ashamed they would feel bash bashful to say this is my wife so we all know that. So you don't let it go because you're married. You let it go because you've had a baby. You let it go because you're breastfeeding. You let it go because you're pregnant. You, I mean, there are fashion lines for every stage of a woman's life. You just need to make a little effort. And you don't even need to spend too much money. You just need to know what's up. That's the way I'll put it. You just need to know what's up because there are lots of places they get things. You don't need to spend a lot of money. And that's the truth. Um, change your hair, do your hair. Why wouldn't you do your hair? I mean, right now it's all about the natural, isn't it? So it, it's, it doesn't take a lot of effort, doesn't take a lot of time. It, you just need to put some thought into it. And don't take your spouse for granted. Don't say, oh, we're married. It's a whole sea finish thing. Lots of women are making the effort out there. And whether you like it or not, especially if your husband walks out, walks out of the house, he'll walk out and he'll see lots and lots of beautiful women everywhere. When he comes back and sees you in a hairnet or sees you in a scarf or something, not dressed up, just looking anyhow. How do you want him to feel? So 
it goes without saying let us make the effort let us make the effort let us make the effort sometimes i know i mean i'm a married woman i know how difficult it is i know how stressful it is to combine work family children wife vocation everything church cleaning the house cooking putting it all together it is tough however it is possible it is doable you can do it so let's make the effort let's be the best let's be the best people we can be let us be people who people see us we leave a lasting impression people see us we leave a good impression you know there are people who you meet and you just can't stop thinking about them you can't just can't stop thinking about what they were wearing you just can't stop thinking about how they're carrying themselves why because of their physical appearance it is the first thing before the person even approaches you to talk to you before the person even hears anything about you it is the way you look so it's something that is very important it's something i, I believe we should it's something i believe we should all think about i would say it again it's not by no means the most important thing because we know God looks at the heart. However, we know it is still one of the things we need to do if we want to get to where we are going. And God has given us the brains, He's given us the talent, He's given us the wherewithal to do all these things and put this whole thing together and be the right, full, wholesome package that He wants us to be. So I'm really, really hoping this has helped one or two people. I'm hoping that this has helped us. I'm hoping that we will do, we wouldn't just be here as but that we would also be doing us. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to his YouTube channel at Saint Vlog. Follow him on Facebook at Chukudum. Follow him on Twitter at Chukudum Oh.